Yeah. So let's move into our spontaneous conversation. Um, spontaneous, this is Grace on Fire. We have a highlight, we have a conversation, and then I wrap it up with a little talk and hoping that my son will join me. Um, and uh, what would you like to start the spontaneous conversation out with? Well, you know, uh, I, I believe that um, right now the, the world is going through a difficult time, difficult period. And there's a lot of turmoil and there's a lot of um, um, uh, confusion, I think. Uh, and there are a lot of emotions that are, um, that are driving people to do things that they probably normally wouldn't do. Um, I don't think that there's anybody out there who a year ago would have woken up and said, you know what? I want to throw a brick through a window right? or I want to beat somebody up. And, and I think, I think what we need to do more than ever now, I think, you know, when the one thing that I say every single day when I wrap up my radio show and I've been doing it for probably, I would guess close to 35 years now, I say, it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, Dr. King said, you don't drive darkness out with darkness. You drive darkness out with light. Exactly. And so for me, you know, and, and I, and I even said it just this afternoon when I was going off the air, I said, listen, I know there's a lot of stuff going on, but please let's be kind to one another. It takes just as much effort to be kind to someone as it does to not be kind to them. And right now, we need to be kind to one another. Please, let's, let's be good people. Let's treat each other with love and respect. And I think that if we look at it from the standpoint of just treat people the way you would like to be treated, mm. that would move mountains. Yeah. You know, the lady that comes in and cleans this building, She's a real sweet lady. I talk to her no differently than I talk to the vice president of our five station Las Vegas radio group. Right. Because you know what? She's a person just like I am, just like he is. We're all doing a job. Yeah. Everybody has a job to do, whatever it may be, or a role to play, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and, and any one of us, from one day to the next, could be out of work, especially in the environment we're in now. And if that were to happen, God forbid, to any of us, we would just be unemployed. I wouldn't be an unemployed DJ. I'd just be unemployed. So, you know, I just, I hope and pray all the time, every day. You know, um, when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is I say, thank you for giving me another day. Um. And then sometime during the day, you know, I may be driving around and I'll look out as I'm driving, I'll look out the, uh, the uh, windshield of the car and the sun will be out and the clouds will be beautiful and the sky will be blue. And I'll just say, thank you. Thank you for all, all this. It's so beautiful. Thank you. You know, and, you know, we, we just have to appreciate what we have. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to, we have to, um, we have to act right. We have to do the right thing. We have to um, be kind to one another um, and respect one another. Look, I have plenty of friends. We don't agree on everything. We don't. That'll never happen. No. <laughs> um, it, you know, regard even even my wife and I don't agree on everything, and I love her more than anything. Right. But no. no but <laughs> what's that? No two people who agree on everything. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? We have to respect one another's opinions. We yep. may not agree with them, but we have to respect them because I can't tell you, I, I can't say, Grace, you can't feel that way. I don't have the right to tell you how you can feel because that's how you feel. That's an internal thing. True. And, you know, sometimes people forget, like you run across somebody and they're, they're, they lash out at you. Um, and you don't know what that person's day was like. You don't know if they're going through a divorce or, you know, lost of their business or 
got in a bad car accident or somebody in their family passed away or, or, you know, um, I mean, we don't know, you know? And so, Mm -hmm. you know, if you just take a moment to, to, to realize that maybe that person is just having a rough go right now and the person you're interacting with isn't the real person. It's the circumstances, you know, and if you just give them a little bit of love, you know, I'll, I'll, this is a crazy story, but I got to tell you this because it's so powerful. About two months ago, um, when COVID really started to hit, um, we had a, a pastor in, in uh, Salt Lake City who wanted to do a prayer on that Friday at noon and wanted all these other radio stations to pray together because he said there's power in prayer, especially when we pray together. And <clears throat> He was um, uh, a Mormon pastor. Our station primarily plays music that targets all people, really, but 67% of our audience is African-American and Hispanic. So two-thirds of our audience is minority. And I thought, you know, maybe we can find someone who fits better with our audience than this pastor. I love the concept, but if we want people to respond, let's find someone who fits that mold better. And I found Pastor Donnie McClurkin, a friend of mine, who is a three-time Grammy winner in gospel music, and he is the host of a nationally syndicated radio show and the pastor of a very huge church on Long Island in New York. So I said, can we get Donnie to do a prayer for us um, for Friday at noon? And his handler said, yeah. Let me let him know, and we'll get that for you. Well, I didn't get the prayer until the following Monday, so it was too late. And I thought, ah, this isn't going to do me any good. And you know what? Something told me, take the prayer, edit it down a little bit, and run it anyway as a promotional announcement. Mm -hmm. So I did. And that was on... Tuesday, we started running it. On Wednesday, probably around four or five o'clock, my afternoon guy runs down the hall and into my office. And he goes, I got goosebumps. The hair on my arms is standing up. I said, why? He said, this lady called up. And he, he shared the call with me later on. He said, this lady called up. She said, last month, I lost my husband. I mean, last month, I lost my father. This month, I lost my job and I was done. I was getting ready to check out. That was it. Mm -hmm. And then I heard this prayer on your radio station Mm -hmm. and it gave me hope and it made me think, you know what? I don't want to do this. I want to fight. I want to keep going. There's a reason for me to be here. And so she called us to thank us for saving, for saving her life. Those were her words. You guys saved my life. So all I'm saying is that person you run into, maybe all you need to do is smile and say, hi, how are you today? Mm -hmm. And then they feel like somebody noticed me. Nobody sees me. I feel like I'm invisible, but this person just said hello to me. And that could be that hi could be the one thing that keeps them from doing what this lady was thinking about doing. So if we just keep those things in mind and just do the right thing, we could change lives. We changed the course of this woman's life. We saved her life. And it's crazy because by all rights, when I got that prayer, it was like, it's too late. Mm -hmm. But something told me, do it anyway. (laughs) That was not, I don't believe in coincidence. No. That was not supposed to run on Friday. It wasn't. No. It was never intended to run on Friday. No. It was intended to run when it ran. Mm -hmm. It was intended to be there. Because if I would have run it on Friday, that would have been it. And it would not have run Tuesday when she heard it. Mm -hmm. A miracle. It's a miracle. It is. Miracle. It's a Christmas miracle. (laughs) And I love what you say, Paco. It's, it's so true. One of the things um, John actually channeled to me this morning 
was he talked about um, putting together a tapestry and all the different threads, all the different colors, all the different patterns, all the different sizes of threads and, and the whole process from the people making the threads to it being delivered to the people sewing it and, and the designs. And, and then in the process of that tapestry being created, there was a lot of, there was a lot of mess and chaos. Um, you know, the, the, I'm sure, you know, the threads came and then they're, you know, and they're sorting them out. And, and then he talked about, you know, when we're cleaning out closets and when we're undergoing any kind of project, it gets really, when you're in the middle of it, it's very messy and you really can't even see the beauty of it. You cannot see, you know, the, the final result, except in your mind's eye, usually in your mind's eye. And if you're right there in the middle and all you're seeing is the, the chaos and all of the shoes that got pulled out of the closet and all the jackets and all the dirt and all the, all the mess, it can be very overwhelming and it can feel, feel very chaotic. And, and so what he was sharing with me in the channeling this morning was that we're, we're right now we're in the middle of, of putting that tapestry together. And we're all coming together as a humanity, all as equals and all as humanities and all bringing our gifts and our talents together at this time to create this most beautiful tapestry. And, and when, and it, we're not, we're, it's not finished. And so we can be in the middle and we can feel confused and maybe even a little chaotic and not sure what's going on, but to trust that when this all comes together to move, like we, like kind of the theme of this is moving past that challenging time, being tenacious, not giving up and keep positive thinking, keeping up. And, and even when people are negative, we have to get stand back up and brush ourselves off, like he said, and keep going. And one of the things that I'm always saying to myself is I'm, when, when it's a challenging thing or when, when I feel like someone's hurt me or I've gone through a very difficult time, like even losing my son. I mean, that was devastating. And, but with even losing my son and, and all the things that have challenged me, I say, I am going to use this, this experience, this hardship, this challenge. I'm going to use this for good. I'm going to use it for good. I'm going to use it to empower me more, to make me better. To, I am going to turn this, you know, metal into gold. You know, or these ashes, <laughs> I'm going to create something beautiful out of all these ashes. And yeah. I keep that thought system of, of, and one of the things John is constantly channeling me is, is we just got to keep our thoughts, our energy, our vibration high. When it drops and we feel ourselves getting down, which we all experience at times, and we feel ourselves depressed or whatever it is, we've got to shift those thoughts. And one of the things I've said that has enormously helped me through the grief of losing my son is I chant thank you you had mentioned that earlier is the gratitude I will chant I, I it has literally saved me sometimes I especially shortly after he passed like the first year I would wake up with intense anxiety and and panic and dread and everything like the, the, the heaviest emotions you can imagine and I would just lay in bed and go, thank you, God, thank you, universe, thank you, God, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I would just chant thank you, sometimes for maybe even a half an hour straight until I felt lighter, brighter, I could get up, and, and, the, and, the, and the dread passed. And, and it was almost like post-traumatic stress room because even those, that dread, those dread and those panic attacks would come throughout the day. And I just say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, universe. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And it would pass. And it's raising our vibrations, raising and raising and keeping our thoughts high and positive. And it takes effort. It takes vigilance. Yeah. Yeah. A lot, of times, it works. a lot of times I, I tell people that sometimes you have to get through the rough spots to be able to um, appreciate the beauty. You know, you don't see a rainbow until after a hard rain, mm -hmm. you know, and usually, um, you know, it's always darkest before the dawn. And, and I know they're cliches, but it's true. It really is. It's you know, I mean, yeah. you, you've taken, you've taken John's message to you and you've turned it into something beautiful 
into something positive, into something um, energizing, motivating, um, that you're sharing with other people and helping them in their lives. So his gift to you, you're paying forward to other people. So that. You know, that's what makes it so beautiful. The fact that you're taking something that hurts you to your core mm -hmm. and you're making it something that's beautiful for you as well as others, you know? It's in the sharing. It really is in the sharing where, you know, as you give, you receive. <clears throat> and, 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 and the messages that John gives me, I need, I'm human, you know, and, and, and they help me. And so as I started channeling shortly after he passed, because I talked to him every day, so I continued to just, I would just automatic write, automatic write, automatic write. And, and he started saying things that were just like spot on, like even my mother's passing, she had six months to live. And he told me two weeks, she passed two weeks later. And wow. everybody in the family, I, I was like, I'm not hearing straight because I'm so emotional. I'm just going to ignore that. But I told a few family members she, that he said two weeks and it was exactly two weeks after he told me where she, she passed away. So for me, I just keep doing it. I keep practicing it. I don't claim to be like a perfect channel by any means. I'm a practicing channel. I'm an ongoing practicing. I, I talk to my son every day and I would tell him, when I pass, I will still exist. You can talk to me. You don't, and I, would, I was a liar. I said, you don't need to grieve me because I'll be with you. I'll be your guardian angel. I'll be the birds singing. I'll be the wind. I'll be the music on the radio. And now that's what he is for me. Yeah. And I used to tell yeah. him that, like, since he was little, I, two, three times a year, I'd tell my kids, I don't know why. I would say, you don't need to grieve me when I die. You know, you don't need to because we're all infinite. We're all infinite. We are all eternal spirit. We all live forever nobody ceases to exist ever we will i will exist and i will be there with you i will be your guardian angel and i will be everything and now that's what he is for me i mean i'll see a bird it'll come and just land right beside me and just stare at me start chirping then i'll see i know it's john it's john it's i know it's just it's him i've had yeah. eagles come right up to me right you know just stare at me and i know it's that i know it's him and he just seems to now animate through everything it, it's hard to distinguish what's everything seems but it's it's beautiful life is in, synchronistic and it's not easy i've had a, a lot of hard challenges just like you and i think it's 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 really takes that determination to stay positive to continue to always be kind and to always look on the higher the, the highest perspective you can in any moment and keep your vibration high and, and then, you know, what he always tells me, because one of his hugest messages with his messages for humanity is keep the, 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 the vibrational frequency high. You, what you say, what you think, how you act, everything that you emanate, keep it high, keep it high, keep increasing it, keep increasing it. And like attracts like. Yeah, and that's what, true. what you will attract to you will be on that same vibrational level. And it's a yeah. it's, it's a lot less work. <laughs> it's a lot easier than <laughs> that's the, for sure. I remember after shortly at the year after he passed, I was opening up John's place. I opened up a John's place in in Salt Lake City in his honor of humane, fair trade, earth friendly market because that's what he was promoting. And um, it was just struggle after struggle after struggle after struggle after you know roadblock after roadblock. And I remember thinking to myself. There's one common denominator in all of this, and that's me, me. My energy is so low and I was grieving. I was deeply, profoundly grieving. I was not in a high frequency at all. I mean, I'm still grieving, but I'm much, much better. And I realized that if, if I was gonna stay at this low frequency, I would continue to attract all these challenges after challenge, yeah. after roadblock after roadblock. Because yeah. it was my energy attracting like attracts like. Yeah. It was a good lesson. I don't want to go through it again. <laughs> but it was a good lesson for me to actually see. Yeah. Very vividly when my energy, because before things were flowing, my life was very synchronistic. I was very happy. Uh, everything was, was really moving beautifully. 
And I, and, and then boom, I was just in a, you know, the deepest depression and, and grief and everything was hard to get, a, just to take a step forward was hard and everything in my world changed. So it, was yeah. a, it was a beautiful example of, of a, your vibrational frequency will attract the level at the exact, like attracts like. And, and it's, it's all part of our growth individually, you know, and, um, I think it's meant to uh, to do two things. Number one, to get us to understand um, our existence and to make us stronger. Yeah, yeah. You know? True. Yeah. So true. Well, this has been a beautiful conversation. I want to have more with you. It's so great. <laughs> yeah, I love your positive out in, you know, your just your your kindness and compassionate for other people and the understanding. You're 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 you have a beautiful heart, a beautiful mind, a beautiful Thank soul. You. You're sharing so much light and kindness for the world, saving people's lives. And you have no idea how many people's lives you have impacted in in such a beautiful positive way that have not called the radio station to tell you yeah uh, and, and i'll some other time when we do another show i'll tell you another story that was kind of along those lines and it was it was pretty powerful so we'll save that one for another day well let's do it let's do it uh, we'll do that we'll make it a date we'll make it a yeah. date. we'll make it a date for sure definitely definitely 